All right, believe it or not, we got a second knife review the same day um, as the other one that's processing right now. Um, had I known this was going to be here this early, I would have just done them both at the same time. But uh, I ordered this from Amazon yesterday at 5.30, and it showed up 11.30 this morning through Amazon Prime. So what are we looking at? Yes, it is another <gasps> dun, 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 Chinese knife. Perish the thought. Oh, the humanity. Yeah, they're great knives, so suck it. Um, so anyway, this one is from Artisan Cutlery. Artisan's a very cool company. They make some good stuff. Their value line is CJRB. The Artisan knives can start around 50 bucks and go up into the several hundred. So this is at the lower end of the Artisan uh, line. This one is called the Sirius because it's a serious knife, and I'm a serious kind of guy. So we've got our Celica, in case you get hungry and you need a small snack. Very nice of them to include that. And let's see. This is the model 1849P. It is using their proprietary AR, AR RPM9 uh, steel. It's a powder steel, roughly the equivalent of D2, 5961 hard uh, on the Rockwell scale. Handle is made of G10. Uh, it is CNC machined, and it is using a liner lock with ceramic ball bearings. So there's your some of your specs. Comes in a nice little pouch here. I guess you could take this and use this and maybe uh, put your Dungeons and Dragon dice in there. Oh, that's a throwback. I haven't done that. I played Dungeons and Dragons as a kid. And I was about 15 or 16. And we lived on a lake up in New Jersey. And I remember going over to my friend's house. And it's like I'm looking out the beach and then out the window and there's all the girls in bikinis and I'm looking at me and my friends sitting there on a Saturday afternoon in 80 degree weather playing Dungeons and Dragons and I was like you know what I'm gonna go hang out uh, on the beach with the guys that are water skiing and the girls and that was the last time I ever played Dungeons and Dragons so that's an old reference for me but anyway all right so what have we got I think the specs are this is like a almost like a three and a half inch blade it is a front flipper so the action's pretty good there Lock bar is kind of stiff. I'm sure that'll loosen up. But you've also got the uh, thumb stud, which I like. Uh, you know, the front flippers, I have a couple, but I'm kind of over the whole front flipper. I know everybody, you got to come up with something new, right? Everybody needs something different. And so this, uh, I've got another one, the the Drifter 2 Appalachian or whatever, Appalachian from Civivi. It has this front flip more here. So it's very easy to grab it from here. From here, it's, it's really hard. You got to really hook your finger in. And when you do that, now you can't really hold the knife properly. So when you do the front flipper on this, you kind of almost need to use your thumb. And it does work fairly well. Um, but honestly, the thumb stud's easier. It's more intuitive and it's easier. I like that they have gone ahead and milled out an area for that. So that it kind of tucks in nice and tight. But then that area also gives you quick and easy access to the lock bar, which if you look is uh, pretty nice. It's got a nice beveled edge. It's not sharp. It's actually well polished. Actually, it's got a mirror polish on it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, as we mentioned, the blade steel is their RPM9, which is uh, their powdered version of a, of a D2, which appears to be very good. This is a Ray uh, Laconico design. And if you watch my, or you haven't watched my other video, um, I talk about, you know, everybody, oh, China this, China that. Shut up. China's making good knives. Don't tell me how you're a patriot because you only buy American knives. Most of you buy $30 Walmart knives. Um, and, I, and I just don't want to hear it. They make really good stuff over there. So depending on the company, like anything else, there's good things in the U.S. There's crap made in the U.S. Just because some bumpkin in the Midwest built something doesn't mean it's quality. You know, There's cheap stuff and expensive, well-made stuff uh, pretty much in every country. So this is one of those examples. So we've got a nice flat ground flat grind with a saber finish, I'm sorry, satin finish, nice swedge along the top. Um, that edge is kind of sharp. Um, I guess if you're using a fire, you know, if you want to uh, strike a fire rod or something, that actually would work really well. It's not sharp enough to cut you, obviously, but that's not as well rounded as some of the others. Um, it does have jimping, but it's kind of back here, not up here where you'd like it. So I would, I would, I would give them a ding on that. It would, would have been nice, but then I guess you couldn't have the guy's name there. It would have been nice to have maybe some jimping that goes up to the name and then maybe start the swedge a little further up and then have some jimping up here just so when you're holding the knife, that's kind of where your finger wants to go. So it's like, well, what's the point of having jimping back here? 
You know, I'm not holding the knife like that. I'm going to hold it like that. So I would knock them for that. I think that was a design aesthetic because they wanted the name proudly displayed there. And that area that normally would be jimping right where your hand rests before it hits the, the narrower part of the swedge. I get why they do it, but that to me is a little bit of form over function. The rest of the blade execution, which I believe this is around a 3.5 inch blade. Let's do a blade size compare. Well, I got a, duh, I got a measurement here. So let's see, we're looking at uh, three and a half with about a three and a quarter inch cutting edge. Overall length is coming in at just about exactly eight inches. So that's three and a half, I do the math, carry the two. Yeah, four and a half inch handle and three and a half inch blade. Um, comes in, I forget the weight, I think it's like 2.39 ounces. It's just under two and a half ounces. So pretty light, nice action right out of the box. Does have ball bearing pivots as I mentioned. Uh, let's see, lock up. Good lock up. How's the blade centering? For those of you that are, oh, it's not exactly perfect. Um, well, it's pretty much perfect. That's, I mean, it looks spot on to me. I mean, if I'm going to be really anal retentive, I could say, nah, I mean, that really is pretty straight on. So as, as perfect as you're going to get. Um, yeah. G10. I like that it's got this fuller going down there. Just adds a little bit of aesthetic, like the uh, contrast here uh, for that, uh, sp whatever they call it. I mean, you got your pivot point. I forget what that's called. It's not the bolster. I don't know. I'm drawing a blank here. The thumb stud is only on one side. So if you are a lefty, you're kind of out of luck. There's no way to that I can see. Well, maybe. I don't know. If this screw goes all the way through into that, then perhaps this could come off. This is a t milled titanium pocket clip. There's, and we're, if you're tying into the video I made earlier about you know the Chinese knives, this is a fifty-four dollar knife, something like that, fifty-six dollars, fifty-four dollars. Got it in less than twenty-four hours, delivered to my door from Amazon. It's really nice G10. If you look up in there, the uh, what you might call it here is uh, properly milled. The liner is the steel liner is milled up in there. You've got a, a, a titanium milled pocket clip. You do have a lanyard there if you want next to the smaller backspacer. I like that rather than holes in it where they just drill a hole. It's there if you want it. You can use it, but it's kind of out of the way and it doesn't disrupt the flow and the aesthetic of the knife otherwise. Very simple construction. As far as the hardware, let's see. We got our little Husky tool. Got this off Amazon for nine bucks. I'll throw a link in there along with the link for the knife if you guys want to pick one up. Great little tool. Um, Husky, you know, it's not Craftsman, but I think Husky is the brand. I've got Husky sockets and stuff I think I bought from Home Depot. So, I mean, it's, it's a name brand. All right, so looks like those guys right there are going to be your... Please tell me they wrote it on there. That's a T6. So these are T6s. That one, I am going to guess, is the other end... That's a T9, and that's actually it kind of fits, but I think it really is supposed to be the, the, the T8. So let's go and see which one actually falls right in. That should be a T8. That one fits a bit. Oh, that one right there is probably going to be the one. That is it. That's it. That's the T8. So um, we got to see it in an angle. Yep, T8. So any blade play? Do I even need to tighten that? I mean, I guess I could a little bit. Does that impact the bearings at all? Now, that's the beauty of the bearings. that you could, To an extent, you can kind of torque it down and eliminate any blade play. I'll probably take that out and then just put a little Loctite on it, make sure that it doesn't move once I get it where I want. But even tightening that up, uh, front to back, nothing. Side to side now, nothing. Nice tight lock up. That's a nice... That's a really nice knife. It's very thin. It's discreet. Sharpness feels great. I need to get some damn paper up here. I gotta go steal some computer paper, printer paper from my wife. Um, I don't use a printer. It's 2022. I don't print things. I keep electronic copies of them. So I don't have paper laying around. But uh, really cool blade shape. I mean, that is a that's going to be a piercer, and I imagine that's going to be a pretty good slicer. It's a pretty high grind. The blade stock is not overly thick. Um, it's nice and thin. Uh, the edge on it feels very, very keen. Feels very nice. 
So, uh, yeah, a little bit jumping up front. That's a cool knife. So let's get the tools out of here, do a quick size comparison and wrap this up. Uh, let's see, we got our PM2, which is going to be on the bigger size for an EDC. But you can see where it fits in with that. It's about the same length almost, but it's a little smaller and thinner and more discreet. Um, and then what we got? We got a bug out. Regular bug out, not the mini. So it's just a wee bit bigger than a bug out. The blade, yeah, because I think a bug out's only got like a 3.3 inch or something like that. So yeah, we're just a tiny bit bigger than a bug out. Oh, look at that action. <laughs> bug out is awesome. And that's not even ball bearings, believe it or not. Um, so let's see, what do we got here? Thickness. The knife is a itty bitty bit thicker than the uh, bug out, but not much. The pocket clip. Well, actually, no. You know what? It looks chunkier, but actually, if we were to put these together, you can see the bug out clip. The bug out's actually a wider knife. They're almost identical when it comes to just the scales. And while this looks big and chunky, it actually doesn't protrude as far. And one thing I like is that here, the way this is mounted, those you got those mushroom caps, you got the screws right there that kind of catch on the lip of your pants sometimes. Here, I mean, it's just a nice smooth groove. Tension is, ooh, that's tight, that's good. That's gonna grip well, but it's nice and smooth. With that fuller, there's no, there's no, it's not gonna tear up your pocket. That's nice and smooth. This is smooth, even though it's got some micro milling in there, you see a little bit of texture. You don't feel it that much. It just gives you a little bit of grip, but it, it's not, it really feels kind of smooth. It's more, you can see it more than you can feel it. So that should slip in the pocket really nice. And there's no screws, no hardware there. I believe that's going to be the screw that goes through. But being, yeah, I don't know. I don't see any other holes here. So I feel like this isn't necessarily reversible. And the fact that they only put this on one side is probably just meant for one, you know, for, for right-handed carry. But it's tip up right-hand carry only from what I can see. If someone tells me I'm wrong, um, you know, then I'm wrong. It's happened. So yeah, I'm going to go over all the screws and make sure everything's tightened up and Loctited and doesn't loosen and make sure the blade is exactly where I want it to be. But so far, I am impressed for a titanium clip, G10, ball bearings, decent steel with a really nice blade and grind and really nice fit and finish. Other than them not putting the jimping because they wanted to make sure they had the designer's name there, I think that's the only ding I could give them. But for 55 bucks, that is a hell of a knife. If you pick this up and you didn't see China on it and you handed it to someone and say, here, play with this for a minute. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the action out of the box. Tell me what you think about the... Uh, the, the, the materials and the look and feel and the titanium, some will go, wow, that, that it's nice, kind of pricey. You don't know I would spend that much. And if you told them it's only 55 bucks, it's literally less than half of the price of the Benchmade. Frankly, I know on paper, the Benchmade's probably the better knife and it's got S30 V steel and stuff. But when you feel this, the action's sweet and you know it's a Benchmade, so you know it's good. But if you were just going by like feel and the fit and finish, you'd feel this cheap plastic grivery or whatever the hell they call it. And you look at the thin steel inserts and stuff and you go, yeah, this is nice, but this feels more like a toy. It, it flexes a lot. It feels plasticky. When you feel this, this feels and looks like a much more premium knife. That is the value of going to China. So long as you're going with a reputable company. I'm not going to get into my rant again. Go watch the other video when it's done processing or I go off on, on FUDs and, 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 and boomers and folks that are bitching about Chinese knives. I've got some things to say about that. This is a great knife. I, I like this. This is definitely, this is something I get. And I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. I review it. Sometimes I keep them. Sometimes I give them away as gifts to friends and family. I am going to keep this. There was another knife. It wasn't a Ray Laconica. There was another one. I wish I could remember. There was a Kershaw and they sold them for like $18. Now, the steel wasn't all that great, but it had this kind of a look and feel and milled handle and stuff. This was milled, the thumb studs. I wish I could find them. They're discontinued. I need to find one because it's a good one to have in your collection. And if you could find them on Amazon or somewhere, they were like 18 bucks. But they were a really cool, really nice looking, good feeling design. This reminds me of that, although it's a lot more premium. Like I said, the extra touch of actually polishing that to a mirror polish, the milling underneath putting the full air in here, using titanium, a titanium milled pocket clip on a $50 knife, really? Very cool. I'm gonna carry this one today. I was gonna carry my 
petrified fish, my $29 knife, which is actually a good knife, man. I was opening the package. This thing is, it feels and cuts like a scalpel. This is like a brand new fresh razor blade knife, like razor utility knife right out of the box. This thing is wicked sharp with that thin blade and the grind all the way to the top, flat grind, incredible. But uh, this is definitely a, a much sturdier, beefier uh, knife. So there we go. Try to keep it under 10 minutes, and I think we hit that. So if you got any questions, I'll put the links to this and the Husky tool up in the comments. If you want it, go click on the link and go buy it. And uh, you got any questions, hit me up.